All right, so let's revolve this thing so we can see what it looks like. Well, we revolve this around the y equals negative 1 axis. I know it says negative 0 0.9, but we're going to pretend it says 1. It makes this shape. Now, you can see that this is a washer right here. It's not a solid disk. Not a solid disk in there. It's not a solid circle. But we're going to pretend it is. So pretend it is for a minute. And let's go back to when it was just this. How do you find the area, I'm sorry, the volume of just that? Now, those cross sections of this shape that we get when we revolve, what were the cross sections? What, were the sh what was the shape of the cross sections? Circles. And so if we look at those circles, uh, let's see. Uh, okay, yeah, pretend that's a circle. Um, this right here would be what on your circle? That would be your radius. And we need our radius to find the area of a circle because the area of a circle equals pi r squared. So in order to find the volume of this solid without the hole in the middle, that would be um, this distance right here, which is rad x plus this distance down there. And what is that distance? That is a... Uh, uh, one, right? And so this would equal the radius, right? So that's the radius squared. You guys with me still? So that's radius squared. Uh, and then we have to multiply this by pi. That will give me the area of every single circle. Now that is one way to think about it. If you understand that and you're afraid that I'm going to confuse you, uh, bleep out what I'm about to say, okay? The other way to think about this is the area between the upper curve and the lower curve. If we want to find the area between the upper curve and the lower curve, that would give us the sum of all of the radiuses. And I, the reason why I want to talk about it like that is because you guys did do something like that, where you find the area between the upper curve and the lower curve. To find the area between the upper curve and the lower curve, you take the upper curve and you subtract from it the lower curve. And what is my lower curve? My lower curve is this line right here, which is... What is this line? Negative 1. Negative 1. So I'm going to subtract negative 1 from this. And then you know to find the area, you have to take the integral from the a to the b. And that a right now is 1, our b is 10. And so we're going to take the integral of this with respect to x. This becomes positive. And look how similar that looks to this. See the rad x plus 1? Rad x plus 1? Now to make this the volume, we just have to square the radius and then multiply it times pi. So pi times uh, 1 to 10 of rad x plus 1 squared, this will give us the volume of this shape without, uh, doing the rev um, without taking out the center part. But we've got to take the center part out. That's the washer method part. Okay. Um, so let's look at the revolution one more time. When I do my revolution... And you see this, this center part right here that we're taking out of the volume? Those are little circles. You guys see the little circles? So I think these little disks right here, and I need to find the, the area of these circles and then take the integral of that to, to take it away. Now, there's a shortcut uh, to do that, um, and I'll tell you the, the shortcut right after we finish, um, we finish doing it the, I guess you would say, normal way. All right, so then I'm going to subtract the volume of the inside uh, cylinder. So to find the volume of the inside cylinder, we need the radius. What is the radius right here? I mean, because our circle would be that, right? I mean, maybe that's too big. Okay, that would be our circle. The radius is just one. So radius squared and then uh, times pi, that would give me the area of, e of one circle. To get the area of each circle, I'm going to go from 1 to 10 on an integral, and that will give me the area of the inside, uh, the, the cone, or not the cone, the cylinder. Actually, I said area, and I meant volume. This gives us the volume of the inside cylinder that we're trying to take out. So I'm going to take away this volume right here, and then we can see... We can actually simplify this because um, some of these start getting really nasty looking. You want to be able to make it simplified so that you can just throw it into your calculator right away. But you guys make mistakes when you plug in the calculators because you haven't practiced it yet. So when um, you see this, you see how it's the same interval? Oh, I forgot the pi right here. 
They're the same interval. And they both have a pi. Can I factor out a pi from this? Okay, I take the pi's out. You cool with that? So I take the pi's out, and this is what I have now. I have pi, and then I'm going to simplify my intervals. We're going to go 1 to 10 once. We're going to have rad x plus 1, and we're going to square that because that was the radius, and we're going to subtract 1 squared. I'm still going to write squared because I want you guys to see that that is a radius. That is the radius of the inside circle. So we have dx. Now you solve it. Let's go. Pull it into your calculator. See if you guys get it. Okay, I heard you guys got 283.79. Let's double check it. That's our volume of this thing. It's still rotating. Here we go. Let's uh, show our answer, and we'll sweep it all the way to the right. Okay, 283.414. Good job. The reason why mine's not exactly like yours is because this one is using an A that's 0.995, a B that's 10.005, and then uh, an axis of revolution that isn't exactly negative one, okay? All right.